So after an introduction, I wanted to have a basic high-level discussion about diet, which I think is the most convoluted and difficult part of personal development and personal athleticism. Um, to start with, the quote at the top, nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels, is something that really resonated with me as somebody who has been at peak performance as an athlete. Once you grasp that longer term re reward system from a healthy diet, you will never be able to completely undo it. It just, the feeling you have mentally and physically is something that will motivate you to stay that way. Uh, unfortunately, if you haven't achieved that, then it will be something that you won't really be inspired to do. And so the next thing I wrote is you don't put diesel in a petrol engine car. Uh, basically, why do people eat poorly? Why do people make bad decisions uh, with this sort of stuff? Um, I can't stress it enough that eating is the most important part of athleticism and health. Um, exercise is almost a given. A lot of people do it. Everybody sleeps. Um, sleep is obviously the most important. If you don't sleep for eight hour, eight days or more, you die. <laughs> so, but f food is nonetheless really important, and it's something that people enjoy. So, it's a, a meaningful change that most people can do in their life. I think um, people struggle with diet because they have had bad behavior, or you know essentially bad diet reinforced for their whole lives, not through any malice at all, but because our parents and our grandparents have had uh, misinformation presented to them as fact. Uh, for example, you know, Kellogg saying that breakfast is essential. It's essential for a child. It probably isn't essential for an adult. Um, again, citation needed. It's just uh, my personal perception and not to be taken as anything but advice. And... Um, I think that as information presents itself uh, with the internet and the age of information, it's sort of hard to hide by, behind um, bad behavior with diet anymore. Um, we know scientifically the composition for a healthy diet, uh, and that can be from a plant-based diet through to meat eating, so, you know, Whatever works for you, I, I really think humans are individual in that regard. I see us as being painfully similar in so many areas, but you know, um, one thing I'm lactose intolerant, for in instance, I wasn't when I was growing up, but something switched and uh, it's definitely noticeable. It's not the end of the world. It's something that bothers my spouse more than anything because she has to smell me uh, live in, in the same house as her. So uh, it's something that I did out of compassion for her, but I feel better as a result. So there's many different ways to skin the proverbial cat. And um, there's many ways that you can get a correct composition for a healthy diet from any diet that you choose. So another discussion point that I was thinking of is why do people eat poorly? As I've already touched on the fact that we've been bamboozled essentially by marketing charlatans and people have been telling us to eat what they're selling. Can't hold that against them, but those days are over. You cannot live in willful ignorance anymore, especially when it comes to diet. We know what's right. Uh, and, you know, to put a hard word on everybody that could be listening to this, we live in a decadent society when everything you eat has to be something that you enjoy. How come you can't consider something to eat which is good for you as opposed to just tasting good? Um, I can argue as well that you can make tasty food being healthy as well. It just requires slightly more effort, but it is possible anyway. So people should really be thinking beyond the short-term reward of what tastes good. And as I said at the beginning, like once you have that long-term view through seeing the benefits, that reinforced behavior will stay with you for a lifetime. And it will allow you, as to use the cringeworthy term with athletes and bodybuilders, to have a cheat day and to go and have McDonald's and Domino's pizza or whatever it is that you want to have. I do as well. 
It's just that my diet is 90% perfect. So the last 10%, you can make up with anything you like, provided you exercise and eat right most of the time. It's not like you have to be, you know, the old quote, uh, your body is a temple. And then there was a quote by the late Anthony Bourdain, your body is an amusement park, explore it, you know? And I, I think the truth is somewhere in between is you, you don't have to be perfection unless you're a paid athlete and somebody's paying you to win, then sure, go for it. Uh, to be healthy though, you don't have to eat everything perfect all the time. You can have these quote unquote cheat days, but you'll find most of the time that you'll f get into a routine of diet, you'll want to eat the right thing anyway because there's plenty of tasty things that you can eat. Um, so at the moment, I'm trying to dispel a myth that exists in modern living that it's more expensive to eat healthy than it is to eat poor quality food. I'm not entirely convinced that this is a true. I think people have conflated wants with needs like many things in modern society and I think you can eat healthy and you can eat cheaply and I aim to prove this with a set of experiments um, that will be coming down the track and I uh, will hopefully produce some evidence for that. Um, and something that's uh, more commonly coming in again that's been a practice for thousands of years in human civilization is fasting. So. Um, to take a break from your diet and uh, eat nothing at all. And that is something that is not controversial at all. Um, it will be controversial at people who have developed an addiction to food, which I am convinced is just as common as an addiction, if not more addiction, uh, more addictive than alcohol, cigarettes and various drugs, simply for the fact that we've been led to believe our entire life that it is healthy to eat all this food non-stop all the time, which I'm not convinced is right. And I'll have uh, some different slides and evidence to prove why fasting is important scientifically as well as culturally and in an era of overconsumption where we're literally throwing away uh, produce. It's um, not economically sustainable and is just straight up madness. So there's so many things that I've got to cover with diet. That's why I would try to explain it in this quick video of a summary and then be able to break it down over possibly the biggest section in Start Building Me.